The 1971 film Fiddler on the Roof was nominated for 13 awards and won 9 in various categories. However, in this list, one category stands out the most. For the film, Oswald Morris won three awards for Best Cinematography. One cannot help but appreciate the style and texture of cinematography in the film and Morris's masterful use of camera techniques. Director Norman Jewison wanted the film to have a more earthy and realistic feel that would capture the time and setting of the story. To achieve this texture, Oswald Morris shot the entire film through a pair of women's silk stockings. Jewison himself confirmed this fact when he accepted the 1972 Oscar Award for Cinematography on Morris's behalf. It is true, he shot the whole picture through a lady's silk stocking. This brilliant use of innovation gave the film a gritty yet warm appearance, which I believe is fitting for the story. Tevye, a Jewish father of five girls, lives a poor and simple life in an impoverished village. The film begins with a musical explanation of life in a village that is endured by keeping of their traditions. Yet throughout the film, the audience sees these very traditions lose their appeal with the younger generation. This is especially true in the area of marriage. Early in the film, the local matchmaker, an elderly woman named Yente, tells Golde, Tevye's wife, that she has found the perfect husband for their oldest daughter. Seidel is to wed the local butcher that happens to be the same age as her father. Morris used the frame within a frame technique to direct the audience's eye to the oldest daughter. When Yente leaves the house, she opens the door to exit. In the background, Seidel can be seen working alongside her sisters. The frame of the door outlines Seidel and draws the viewer's eye to the young woman that will be the first to upset the tradition of the village throughout the rest of the film. This scene is one of the many great examples of visual storytelling that could be seen throughout the film. Upon hearing this news, Seidel tells her lover, Model, that he must quickly ask for her father's blessing before the engagement is made official. Model assures that he will. Morse's use of visual storytelling in this case was beautiful. Tevier rushes around the house in an attempt to get everything settled before the Sabbath begins, and is a little more than annoyed by Model's insistence on speaking with him. Finally, with exasperation, Tevier agrees to hear what Model has to say. The two men stand face to face. Seidel stands in the background, watching with anticipation as her lover tries to summon the courage to ask for his blessing. She faces the camera while the two men look at each other. The audience sees the profile of the two men, framing Seidel once again. After a moment of awkwardness, Model chokes and merely wishes Tevye a good Sabbath. Upon hearing this, the camera zooms, moving past the two men and focusing on Seidel's face. The zoom highlights the disappointment that she feels. There are so many ways this scene could have been composed, but Morse's use of framing Seidel between the two most important men in her life adds a layer of visual storytelling that supports the script wonderfully. Tevye meets the butcher, and it's made known to him that he wants to marry his oldest daughter. Here, Morris introduces a cinematic technique that he revisits several times throughout the film. The camera closes up on Tevye as he weighs the pros and cons of the marital arrangement. In the background, the butcher's face is frozen in mid-laugh yeah, while Tevye considers the possibilities. He's a good man. He likes her. This technique is revisited three other times when his daughters come to him with news that they have fallen in love with someone that they wish to marry. Interestingly, in the scenes with his daughter, they are further away in the background than the butcher in the correlating scene. I believe this is because the marital proposition presented by the butcher is nearer to Tevye's level of comfort. The butcher asks in a way that holds to the traditions of the village. When his daughters present their proposals, it goes against the very traditions that are central to their way of life. Morse's decision to have them further away from Tevye as he considers their proposal highlights this reality. As soon as Tevye comes to his conclusion, the daughters and their lovers appear again in the foreground. This tells the audience that the moment of consideration has passed and his answer to the young couple is about to be disclosed. Three of Tevye's daughters approach him in this way. Each of them seems to take Tevye further away from the tradition that he holds so dear. The last daughter to approach Tevye with this sort of news is his daughter Havela. The audience immediately recognizes that there's something different about this proposal when Havela does not approach him with her lover by her side. In the initial exchange, there is no room for consideration for Tevye. Her lover is not Jewish, and for Tevye, the idea is not even up for discussion. However, a few scenes later, we discover that they married in secret. Tevye is pushing his cart when Golde frantically approaches him and gives him the news. He tells her to go home and states that Havela is now as good as dead to them. When Golda leaves, Tevye sits and imagines how things were when Havela was still a child. Havela interrupts the scene and pushes for a conversation. At one point, Tevye begins to consider the ideas he had done with the other daughters. The audience might expect that he will come around as he had done before, but Tevye flashes with anger and refuses to concede, leaving Havela standing alone in a large amount of negative space on the screen. This was not the film's first use of negative space. Earlier, when his daughter Hadel and her lover Perchik presented their love to him, Tevye gave them his blessing, and the two walked away hand in hand into the horizon of negative space. This imagery foretells their destiny as we later discover that the two of them will leave the village. In the scene with Havela, the visual elements demonstrates 
her isolation that will come as a result of her marriage outside the faith. These are only a few examples of the cinematic elements that Morris employed to tell a visual story. There are so many examples to choose from that it's not difficult to see why this won so many awards.